everybody, I want to do a quick demo here, probably about uh, six or eight minutes on how to do emissive materials that affect the environment. So specifically, I want to show you how to do volumetric lights. And those are lights that not only affect the object that they're illuminating, but they also are visible in the environment and they send out rays, they send out photons, which is the way lights affect the actual environment, especially when there's something in the atmosphere like dust or moisture, uh, so you can get some really nice effects with it. All right, so let's get started here. I created just a little um, glob of balls here, of uh, spheres, and I have two lights set up just to give a nice three-dimensional look. I've got a main key light, and I've got a fill light here. This is the fill light, and you can see it's um, you know just giving a nice, uh, pleasant three-dimensional look here, which I think will be a good starting point for us to um, to take a look at what we can do. All right, so let's start by creating a light that is visible in the environment. Um, I'm going to come to the um, light menu and I'm going to put a point light into the scene. So if I move this out of the way, um, you can see that if I pull this point light out, there's not a obvious effect on the object, although it is affecting it. For some reason in Redshift you have to really crank up the point lights. So I'll come into the point light attributes here. Let me get things rearranged. And, sorry about that. And um, I'm going to turn up the um, strength of this point light. And just out of experience I know it needs to be something like 22,000. And so when I do that you can see it is starting to change the object. It's illuminating the sphere which is closest to the light right here. And you can also see that it's casting some shadows on itself. So we know that this light is definitely affecting the scene, at least affecting the object, but still it's not visible. So what do we need to do to make this light visible? Uh, we have to add a redshift environment and that's here under the icon. Uh, looks like a, a star with a bite out of it we're going to go ahead and grab a redshift environment object and we're going to pop that into our scene and right off the bat immediately with the default settings it totally blows out the scene so we've got everything in a whiteout condition I'm just going to pull it down here and um, what's happening is all three of the lights the main light the fill light and this point light are all contributing photons volumetric material or information rather to the scene and it's just overwhelming by the defaults, it's set quite high, and so everything is just um, is just being uh, blown out. So there are two things we could do. We can work at it either from the uh, environment object level, which would be more global, or we can do it at the light level. So let's start here. If we go to the environment tag, and we turn down under volume scattering, and we're talking about volumes here, so we'd want to turn down the setting here, and it's this one. By default it's at 0.1, but if we um, come in and just crank this way down, we're just telling that tag to start limiting the amount of effect, amount of volumetric effect that all the lights have universally. And so if I continue to crank it down, that is 0.0001, and you can see that, sure enough, we can see the lights, but they're contributing this overall fog to the environment, which um, can be really cool. But let's go ahead and leave this at the default. And to give ourselves more finite control, let's approach it from the light side. So rather than the global setting under the environment tag, let's approach it from the light side. So let's start with my key light right here. This is the big one to the left. Go into details, and you'll see that you have the ability to crank down that light's influence on diffuse lighting, on reflection and transmission, etc. Uh, 